Okay, if I'm going to start profiling Hall of Famers, <clears throat> yesterday I did Hashik. I want to talk about Brian Trache, and I'll say why. Brian Trache's career starts off with him being kind of a megastar. And at the end, he's almost forgotten. And I say that as somebody who watched the Penguins of the early 90s, and his contribution, almost forgotten. It's a guy who would play a lot of playoff games and get himself quite a few points in said playoffs. Starts off with him being drafted number 22 overall by the New York Islanders in 1974. He joins the league in 1975, 75-76 season. He plays 80 games, 32 goals, 63 assists, 95 points. He gets the Calder Trophy. And he's part of this, this young core coming up for the Islanders, and they're going to do something soon. 76-77, he gets 76 games, 30 goals, 42 assists, 72 points. So there's a drop there. That's that whole sophomore jinx thing, right? Well, we'll see. Year three, 77 games played, 46 goals, 77 assists, 123 points, and he's a first-team all-star in the NHL. He is the best center in the league at this stage of the game, according to who got voted first-team all-star. 78-79, uh, it gets even better. 76 games played, 47 goals, 87 assists, 134 points. He's a first-team All-Star, gets the Hart Trophy and the Art Ross. Something happens at 79-80, and his name's Wayne Gretzky. And this is where it's it's really interesting, because from here going forward, Trotsky has a lot of success, but he's overshadowed by this, this Gretzky kid, whoever he is. 79-80, uh, he plays 78 games, gets 42 goals, 62 assists, 104 points. He wins a Conn Smythe that year, the year that the Islanders first win the Stanley Cup. He wins that over guys like Mike Bossy, Denny Potvin, and Billy Smith. Guys who actually will overshadow him in the midst of this dynasty. Trache is, again, uh, a, a very dynamic player at this stage of the game. Solid goal scorer. He never had 50. Solid goal scorer. Really good at passing the puck and passing it to this, this Bossy kid. Who turns out to be a pretty good goal scorer in and of himself. And I had thought about doing a Mike Bossy uh, profile today. But I thought, no, I'm going to go with Trotche because he's kind of the forgotten guy from that dynasty. In that, again, when we look back at veteran players who've had a bunch of Stanley Cup rings, yeah, I don't I don't remember Trotche being a really uh, talked about guy in the 80s. And yet, that's because scoring was way up. Oh, no, he did get 50 goals. I'm talking about 80 81, 73 games, 31 goals, 72 assists, 103 points. So he's still scoring 100 points every year. Solid. And then he gets his 50-goal season in 81-82. 80 games, 50 goals, 79 assists, 129 points. And he's a second-team All-Star. And this is a year where it seems like everybody's getting 50 goals. 81-82 was a very offensive season. So again, he kind of gets lost in the mix. 82-83, 80 games played, 34 goals, 55 assists, 89 points. 83-84... 68 games played, 40 goals, 71 assists, 111 points. And he's a second-team All-Star in the NHL behind Gretzky. Uh, so he has kind of a down year by his standard here with 89 points. Comes back with 111 the year after and only 68 games. So if he played those other 12 games, he would have probably ended up in about the 129-point area. Now, 83 is where the Cups end for the Islanders. 84 is where... Uh, they reach the final, but they lose to the uh, Oilers. 84-85, 68 games played, 28 goals, 31 assists, 59 points. And it just feels like he enters the second half of his career here. He's still a good offensive player, though, as evidenced by the following season. 85-86, 78 games, 37 goals, 59 assists, 96 points. 86-87, uh, 80 games played, only 23 goals that year, 64 assists, 87 points. So... 64 assists is very impressive. But this is at a point in time where the Islanders had this LaFontaine kid coming up. He's a pretty good center in and of, him, in and of his, uh, like on his own. So uh, you're you're looking at a diminished role at some point soon for Trache. 87, 88, 77 games, 30 goals, 52 assists, 82 points. He is still scoring more than a point a game. But there's a large difference between the 82 points here and the 134 points early on in his career. This just illustrates what happens with most players' careers. They will have, they'll put up their best offensive seasons 
early on, and then the rest of their career, they may still be point-of-game guys. They may still put up really solid offensive totals, but it's unlikely they ever get back to those heady totals from when they were in their early 20s. Um, 88, 80, 90, plays 73 games, 17 goals, 28 assists, 45 points. Gets the King Clancy Award, which is nice, and the Clancy and Masterton are two trophies that you see that go to guys who are very often towards the end of their careers. So at this stage of the game, it's like, okay, so Trotz is probably almost done. Um, he's had a great career. We'll, we'll go ahead and, and recognize that, but he's almost done. Uh, 89-90, 59 games played, 13 goals, 11 assists, 24 points. He's done. At this stage of the game, with 24 points in the season, Trotze is written off. The Islanders don't re-sign him. He signs with Pittsburgh. He plays 52 games with Pittsburgh in 1991, gets 9 goals, 19 assists, 28 points. Now, there are two ways to look at this. You can look at this and say he held on too long. That would be incorrect. Um, he, he couldn't stay healthy for a full 80 games anymore. He couldn't play first-line minutes anymore. But he had reinvented himself and become that really solid leader slash defensive forward that you kind of sort of need when you want to win. Uh, he played 63 games in 91, 92, 11 goals, 18 assists, 29 points. So his points per game are down. Absolutely. Completely, totally agreed on that. But he is still a leader, as evidenced by the fact that the, that the Penguins win a Stanley Cup in 91 and 92. And there's all kinds of credit given during those seasons for, for guys like Ron Francis being brought in. And that's fine. But Trottier played his role too. And this is where it's interesting, because during the, the, the Stanley Cup run a decade before, he's Conn Smythe winner, he's the big hero. 1991, he's a support guy, and he never complained about it. He played that role, and he played it really, really well. He was a leader in the locker room, and for, for Mario Lemieux, I guarantee he would tell you he appreciated having that presence. 92-93, his final season, he plays 41 games, 4 goals, 11 assists, 15 points. For his career, 1,279 games played, 524 goals, 901 assists, 1,425 points. And he did score a lot of these points during an era where there was a lot of scoring being done. Not going to lie about that. But first team, second team, Art Ross, Conn Smythe, Hart Trophy, Calder, and then the Clancy. Do you know what's interesting about this, though, is he only had the Hart once. He had the Art Ross once. Um, he had the Calder as well. Now, without that Conn Smythe, could you make an argument of, yeah, he had a really good career, he scored a lot of points, but yeah, he played for the Islanders, played for the Penguins. See, where, see this, is, this is where it's interesting, because he's in the Hall of Fame and he belongs there. But there's always going to be that counter-argument. In this case, it, it wouldn't hold a lot, of, a lot of weight. I don't think a whole lot of people would even try making it. But this is why when I look at a current player, current players or recently retired players, we're not sure how they fit into the Hall of Fame picture. Um, and people say, well, you know, and they make an excuse for why they don't belong there. That excuse can be made for guys who are already there in some cases. Um, Brian Trache, though, went from being one of the best players in the league, a, a, a dynamic, exciting player and a winner, to being one of the best support guys in the NHL. And... He may not have played a lot of games in Pittsburgh, but to me that was more impressive. Because I don't know of very many players who've been this 110, 120-point player. Just picture, um, I'm trying to think of, of somebody to use as an example here, because I would not put Trotche into like a, a Sidney Crosby, Connor McDavid sort of category. But just picture like a Patrick Kane in Chicago. Patrick Kane putting up 25 points in a season and being happy being on a fourth line uh, for, for another team other than Chicago. So Chicago gives up on him and he ends up going somewhere else. And he plays a fourth line role and he scores about 15 to 20 points a year. I, you know, you just, you, you likely wouldn't see it now, but uh, it's, it's impressive to me how well Trottier changed his game and adapted so he could play a little longer. So there you go. The career of Brian Trotche, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. And yes, with the history videos, I'm going to end up talking about the Islanders a lot in the, the coming days. 
Uh, so this is sort of a preview of that, and I will definitely talk about careers of, of other Islander greats who played during this era. Because, yes, there was an era where the Islanders were a damned impressive team. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just have it upon this video. I'll talk to you again soon.